Hi guys, you're here with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, and we are here to talk about pomegranates and how you can use them in herbalism and witchcraft. Mostly out of the books of Scott Cunningham, but then also out of Supermarket Sabbaths and Encyclopedia of Wic Wicca and Witchcraft by Raven Grimasi. I just call her Raven G. <laughs> that really popular woman who writes lots of really good witchcraft books, yeah? So, pomegranates and witchcraft. You know, the first time I heard about them in witchcraft, I heard that you could just pop the seeds, keep this on you, and just work it every day. And what I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Pop the seeds. And it will dry inside of this pomegranate if you never puncture it. And when it fully dries, you can keep it in your purse. And it is amazing prosperity and luck when it fully dries. And it usually takes about a year. And you just squish it with your intent every day. And man, at the end of that year, that's amazing. So that's what I'm going to try and do with this one that I started with you guys on this video. And I'll give Alex back his other pomegranate. Um, but yeah, when <clears throat> one of my idols, I guess you could say, or my, like... Mothers of witchcraft and learning a lot. Lady Grave Dancer, when they did a, like, what's in your purse video, she had a uh, dried pomegranate. And so, I would like to tell you about them. Normally I start with Scotty's books, that's Scott Cunningham, but I think today I'll start with Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft by Raven G. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't say a ton in here. It just says a little bit. And it says, ready, pomegranate is a symbol of fertility. The pomegranate, uh, no, in pr uh, patriarchal lore, it is symbolic of male semen. Sorry, I laugh at dumb things because I'm a child inside. Uh, and in matriarchal lore, it symbolizes the women's mysteries as they apply to the blood mysteries. Obviously, that's um, menstruation. Birth, sex, and death. In the myth of Persephone, if, do you guys know the myth of Persephone? If you don't look it up, it's a really cool story. Um, in the myth of Persephone, she was forced to remain in the underworld for part of each year because she ate pomegranate seeds given to her by the lord of the underworld. In many legends, particularly rated, related to fairy kingdoms, the eating of food in the other world binds one to that realm. Okay, that whole Persephone story popped up in the, in the show Harlots. And I, uh, with Lucy and um, Lord Fallon, and I absolutely love that. If you guys have Hulu and uh, you haven't seen Harlots yet, you need to. There's two seasons already, and it is so addictive. So addictive. I just love British shows, and then it also takes place in, like, what? It's the late 17, early 1800s? I don't remember exactly the time piece where they're at, but... It's amazing. All right, so next on pomegranate. It's so pretty. This one is just like bright red, like my glasses. <laughs> um, next on pomegranate, let's read out of Supermarket Sabbaths. It's a good book. There's lots of cool things in here um, that don't even have to do with food, actually. They have like an ash spell in a bottle and, you know, some other things, and I don't exactly know why those things are in this Supermarket Sabbaths book, but when I talk about herbalism and I use this book, the only thing I bring forth is the um, polarity, because I think that that's interesting and it's something that Scott Cunningham doesn't give in his books. So for pomegranate, uh, fruit and juice, element fire protection, okay? That's like the only one in the lot that's fire protection. Like, so it must be a pretty powerful 
None other ones say fire protection. They say fire, but not fire protection. So that one must be very powerful. Planet Mercury, Polarity Yen, or Yon. And magical uses, luck and fertility. Now let's see what Scotty has to say in the three books that uh, he had bits on pomegranate in. So uh, if you've been with me on my channel for a while, you know that I love this book by Scott Cunningham, Wicca in the Kitchen. I'm an eclectic witch. I'm not a Wiccan or a pagan, but <clears throat> it doesn't matter. The way that Scott Cunningham writes, it's for anyone practicing energy work, magic. I don't know what to call it. Witchcraft is normally what I call it. Okay, so um, on pomegranate, it says the planet is Mercury, the element is fire, the energies are fertility, creativity, and money. Lore throughout Mesopotamia and the Mediterranean, this many seeded fruit was linked with deity. The Hittites attributed the pomegranate to Abriz, their god of agriculture. Okay, so that's really cool. It's tied to agriculture. The Greeks depicted Zeus holding a pomegranate. <laughs> The redness of the seeds also suggested that the fruit sprung from the blood of Dionysus. The pomegranate also played a symbolic role in early Ju Judaic symbolism. Representations of pomegranates abound in the art of the antiquity, such as the famous pomegranate-shaped silver jar found in uh, Tutankhamun's tomb. <clears throat> The fruits were used as money, barter, and cash in ancient Egypt. These were so wanted in ancient Egypt that sometimes even people died over them. Remember we were talking about cloves. And cloves were so popular that there were wars fought over them and people died for them. Not world wars or things that are in history books. Maybe a little bit if they're telling the truth, you know, but um... Spices were currency for a long time. When, you know, we started traveling around and finding, you know, different areas of the world that grew different stuff, that was barter, that was cash, and it was more valuable than gold at the time. Uh, more about pomegranate. Pomegranates were served at Babylon marriage banquets. The pomegranate seeds were also offered to guests during Asian weddings, such as we put out bowls of nuts. In contemporary American folklore, these are lucky fruits. A wish is always made before eating the fruits, first seeds. <clears throat> so when you crack open a pomegranate, make a wish that you really need before you eat that first seed. And really, really have your intent when you hold that pomegranate before you bust it open. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Open it. Eat one seed and uh, make your wish then. <clears throat> Where are we? Magical uses. A fine food for autumn seasonal festivals, particularly Samhain or Halloween. The redness of the juicy flesh surrounding the seeds symbolize the blood of life that will continue during the coming winter months. The pomegranate was used in fertility magic due to its numerous seeds, right? Because seeds represent fertility. And this is full of about 300 seeds, you know? Each pomegranate has about 300 seeds. Organic ones will probably have about 200, 250, you know, because they're smaller, they're not full of GMOs and sh shish shish. Uh, all right, so used in fertility magic due to its numerous seeds. Well, this was perhaps superstitious. Pomegranate seeds can be added to diets geared toward physical fertility. Simply eat with visual visualization. Alternately, eat pomegranate. Okay, so eat with visualization if you want fertility. If you guys want to get pregnant, okay, 
or if you have a friend that wants to get pregnant or a client. If I had a client that wanted it, I would buy the pomegranate and I would meditate with it. I would pray with it. I would put my attention into it and then I would give it to them. And then I would tell them to do what the book just said, which was... Um, I'm just going to try and read it again. I'm sorry that I blanked out. The redness of the juicy flesh surrounding the seeds symbolizes the blood of life that will continue during this coming winter months. The pomegranate was used uh, in fertility magic due to its numerous seeds. While this was perhaps superstitious, pomegranate seeds can be added to diets geared toward physical fertility. Uh, simply eat with visualization. That's where I left off. So when I work on that myself for the client and then I give it to them, I tell them, I've worked on this. I've spent time with this. There's intention in this. You treat this like a child, like your own child. And then I would have them just like literally take a couple days off or on the weekend, treat this like a baby that they love and then have them eat it and visualize themselves being a mother or a father. You know, that's really something that you could do. It's really gorgeous. Uh, alternately eat pomegranate or drink the sieved juice to simulate uh, creativity. There are many forms of fertility. Eat pomegranates with visualization to promote increased income. Or rub fresh pomegranate seeds onto money before spending it to ensure its return. That's awesome. So get a pomegranate when you get your paycheck. Get your paycheck in cash. You guys, if you don't know, <laughs> start getting used to spending in cash. Okay? And I'm telling you this right now. If anyone says that you have to get a chip put into your hand so that your bank card is just right there, uh, please don't put any chips in your body. Uh, it's, it's going to be coming. And in five years, we're going to look back at this video and, you know, Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? I might be wrong. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I like that idea. Uh, rub fresh pomegranate seeds onto money so that it will return. I'm totally doing that. I am totally doing that. I'm going to juice a pomegranate, you know, and then I'm going to put it in a clean mason jar and the juice will probably come up to like a fourth of it. And then when I get my money, because I use cash, that's what I use. I don't use my debit card. I use my debit card when I have to pay something online or order on Amazon or whatever. But I use cash, you know? Like, I've had so many bank problems and, like, overdraft fees, and you just get bent over at the bank, man. It's not right, you know? Um, so I don't you know, trust that system. And I live paycheck to paycheck. Like, it's hard, you know? Um, and I spend all my money on candles and witchcraft and like, you know, my... Huh. So I'm not trying to really get into that. I'm just saying that um, returning your money back to you is a really cool thing. And if you just juice these pomegranates, and uh, I have two pomegranates, I'll do a video on that because I'm also doing prickly pear ink because Alex found me the dark color prickly pears, three of them, actually. So I'm really flipping excited. We're gonna do ink with this pen and uh, the sieve. And it's uh, gonna be amazing, amazing. So I keep talking about doing that video, but I'm going to do it. And now I'm going to talk about prickly Oh shoot, there's more to talk about pomegranates. Um, because I already talked about prickly pear, we're just interrupting the pomegranate uh, video to say the prickly pear. I only found a little bit about it in this book and it came right after pomegranate. It was so perfect. Prickly pear. Now we're talking about this, y'all. Ah. The planet is Mars. The element is fire. Energy is protection. Magical uses, prickly pears known as tunas, 
in Spanish, produce deliciously juicy fruits. They are sometimes available in southwestern markets or can be picked straight off the plants. But take care not to prick your fingers on the spines, which are already pulled off, but they come out of here in their spines. Because it's also called mm, cactus fruit, I believe. Here are the ones you cannot make ink with. Because <laughs> this is just like uh, not colored inside, but this is a dark color. So um, I got that influence from this book on how to make some witchcraft ink. So rust on prickly pear. For those, that, uh, yeah, for the sale in stores have been despined. The fruit is surprisingly sweet and quite delicious. I agree with that. There's little tiny seeds in there, and you'll see that on the video when I do the ink. Um, eat it as a part of protection diets. Prickly pear jelly and jam are sometimes available in grocery stores and can be also eaten for protection. And that's all we've got on prickly pear. I just want to do a snippet in the middle of the pomegranate video. Sorry if that was confusing. Now we're back to pomegranate and Scotty. And we are in magical herbalism. I like this book. It's interesting. But so far, out of all of Scotty's books, you know that this is my favorite. But The Magical Household, which is like 10 or $11, and it's a pretty small book. The whole book has house spells. And I'm going to do a video just talking about that book, because it is flipping something. Um, on pomegranates here, in this book, um, all it says is that marriage and fertility charms. Carry a sachet of orange flowers to get the word out that you are in the mood for marriage. <laughs> and orange is your, the color of your sacral chakra, which is like, I can't show you, but right between your legs. <laughs> in the mood for marriage, really? That's funny, Scotty. Thank you for making me laugh. <laughs> um, carry a bag full of hazelnuts to ensure your own fertility or give to a bride to ensure hers. The pomegranate thing's coming up. I'm just telling you we're in this like marriage and fertility charms. Other herbs to ensure fertility are basil, hazel, poppy, cucumber, apple, pomegranate, acorns, myrtle, and all nuts. Men should carry a piece of mandrake root to ensure their own fertility. Mandrake root and sexual powers. Prowess. What's prowess? What the heck is that word? Well, the jasmine flower does the same for women. I eat jasmine flowers in my tea. They're so good and they float right on the top. Ooh. Um, the first seven herbs listed. Anyway, it goes on. But in here, it's talking about pomegranate as a fertility herb. So there's that. In the last book, of course, we are talking about the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham. My herbal Bible, Scott Cunningham is my... Father of witchcraft. I love you, Scotty. I'll even sing for you to the world on my YouTube channel. No. Oh, look. I could do the chakras and I could point on this. Like, uh, sacral chakra is right there. And then it goes to here. And below that's red. You're, I can't do this. Root chakra, sacral chakra. Solar plexus, heart chakra, throat chakra, <laughs> and that's all you can see. I'm hilarious. Sorry. It's been a long day and I was really sad I couldn't send that package to New Zealand because it was going to cost $300, over $300. Like, what the heck is that? It was a small box and a piece of art. Bump. Okay, pomegranate. Um, folk names are the Carthage apple, the grenadier, the Merrick harlow, the palnum peconium, the pound garnet, the gender is masculine, the planet is mercury, the element is fire, the deities are Persephone and Curius, C-E-R-E-S, 
powers, divination, luck, wishes, wealth, and fertility. And with wealth, again, when you're putting it on your money, it's going to come back. I'm doing that. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm doing that. I hope that you do too, because this is the season for pomegranates, you know? This is it right now. <clears throat> Magical uses, the seeds have long been eaten to increase fertility, and the skin carried for the same reason. So, guys, when we talk about witchcraft in the kitchen and not getting rid of all the, like, okay, you eat the fruit, right? So you eat your orange, or you eat your lemon. Save those seeds. Save the the skin, because those can be used for magics, you guys. And maybe it, something calls for basil and you can't afford to get that. You get this book and it will tell you what to substitute. And I'm not kidding. This is, that's why I'm in love with this book is because you can always figure out another answer because of the way he's organized it in the back. Okay. You can look up just everything you need is right there. And Scotty, arrest your soul. I'm so thankful for those books that you put out. And I know this video is getting long. Did we get all the way through pomegranate? Did we? Did we? No, we did not. The seeds have long been... So, and the skin carried for the same reason. So you could dry the skin and then put it into like a little sachet, or you could put it into a poppet, or you could put it um, into a little protection jar or fertility jar, or you could do a lamp for fertility, dry those skins and put them in there. Absolutely. Uh, the pomegranate is a lucky magical fruit. Always make a wish before eating one and your wish may come true. A branch of pomegranate discovers concealed wealth or it will attract money to its possessor. The skin dried is added to wealth and money incenses. Awesome! That's amazing. But, Scotty, if that's true, then why couldn't I look up pomegranate in this book of incense, oils, and brews? That one bums me out. <laughs> Women who wish to know how many children they will have should throw a pomegranate hard on the ground. The number of seeds would, which fall out. So when this busts on the ground, if any seeds fall out of it, if none fall out, then it's zero. But if it's 12 that fall out, 12 kids, oh my god. Uh, where am I? So. Branches of pomegranate hung over doorways guard against evil. Where do pomegranates grow? I would love to like grow a pomegranate tree. That would be amazing. Um, branches of pomegranate hung over doorways guard against evil, and the juice is used as a blood substitute or a magical ink. And that's again why I'm juicing it. So I'm getting ready for these magical inks over there. And I'm pretty excited about it. So I hope that you can come back with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch. And make some really radical, <laughs> radical magical inks. Radical magical inks. Radical magical inks. 